Can you just delete the corridor? Okay, you would have fine. to redo it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just start recording. So I'm just going to recreate quickly what we did last time. So I'm just going to uh, bring my points. That happens when you start working with a computer you typically don't work with. Okay, so I'm just gonna skip the creation of the group for a moment. So I will assume that all of you are looking uh, the two alignments you created last time. So you all probably familiar with what I'm doing now. Yeah. Just want to check something here because this looks a bit odd. Uh, there's some files we need to download uh, for this of Moodle for today's lecture. No, we're just using the same. Uh, uh, so where we start with these points, all projects CV471. So yeah. uh, we're just working our way, but I'm assuming everybody has this already on your screens. I am the one ill prepared for the class. But in anyhow, it might be refreshing for you to receive the process and then arrive at the same point. Of course, I'm not giving you explanations because I already explained this before. You see, this is a little glitch over here. So when that glitch happens, you go and adjust a little bit your alignment. You can also attempt that regeneration. Now I'm gonna keep the design criteria off. I cannot remember guys if I, if I mentioned this, but when you have different speeds in different locations, you can just add here 
and you can say my first speed is going to be 80 and that's going to go uh, 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 from station zero but then from a station let's say uh, 2500 my speed is 100 uh, the other way around so you can you can split uh, here your uh, segments into whatever is your speeds so you can create this this is something i have forgotten to tell you last time uh, for now i'm gonna ignore it Yeah, no, the regeneration is not working for that. So I have a, I have somehow a glitching here in my, that's fine. I'm going fast, I know guys, but it's because I'm assuming you have this already. Just making sure that the points match my starting and ending points because as you saw, I did it fairly quickly. Okay, so you are at a point that looks like this or did I do something else before? All right, now, um, We're gonna look into two things now. Uh, we're gonna introduce an assembly and we're gonna introduce a corridor. So let's start by the first one. So for an assembly, everybody's here, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay, so as a matter of fact, maybe it's not worth it recording the previous portion. All right, doesn't matter, let's keep it there. So we're gonna come here to assembly and we're gonna say create assembly. So that is under the home tab. An assembly is a representation of the elements that the road environment has. That includes pavement, curb and gutter, sidewalks, barrier, like jersey barriers, guardrails, retaining walls. And you have two lines that are called daylight. I know it's weird the way they call it, daylight. It's really the cut and feel uh, slope lines so those two lines will define uh, your cuts and fields as as your road segment extends to touch the existing ground the surface so the surface we have here in red and uh, green is the existing ground you can walk on top of that surface it's a representation of some hills and some depressions when i put this assembly 
on the horizontal alignment that you see there, which is the center line, what is going to happen is that is going to cross and touch the surface, either by filling or cutting. It depends. So go ahead and click on Create Assembly. And uh, don't worry about it, the name of the assembly. Uh, or uh, It's going to just give assembly one as a number. Or we can put do not use. Or we can put personal assembly. Or we can have two lanes and one sidewalk. It's up to you. This is just an assembly we're going to create. But for now, I'm not going to use this one. I'm only going to use it to bring the pointer for the assemblies. And click in an empty space. You will see this is going to bring a target. I'm going to wait until you get to this point. I'm there. OK, thanks. There too. OK, good. Uh, now. We're going to uh, make a right click to disengage the, the fine assembly. My computer is kind of frozen. Oh, here. OK. So we recovered the pointer. <clears throat> now, when you click on this target, you are going to get the assemblies menu. And this is important because you can access the tool palette or the catalog. OK, guys, we are going to use the tool palette. Now, notice on the help, it says tool palette control plus three. So that means we actually don't have to do this to get the palette. We can actually hit control and the number three, and the tool palette will arrive. But let's go through this one. So click on the tool palette, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lana? <laughs> yeah, I don't have it popping up, the assembly one. You I think don't it have has... this target? I have the target. Did you click on the target? Yes. And did you have the dynamic menu? I have one of them. Let me Remember, I have 2015, there. so your view might be slightly different. But when you click on the target, did you get this dynamic menu? So I have an arrow that I think, OK, got it. You got it? Yeah, for me, there's an arrow. And then you need to press all the way down to get that option. Oh, I see. Is that the case for you guys? It's maybe because of the different version. I have an old version of Civil 3D. Uh, were you guys able to get this tool palette? The tool palette has yes. multiple tabs. Yep. Uh, so you have one tab for lanes, shoulders, medians, curves, the day line, which is the cut and fill lines, some generic, uh, some conditions. I never use that one. Oh, you also have ditch and channels. I have forgotten about this one. We have retaining structures. We have rehabilitation. We have bridge. Now, at the bottom, you see there is like a three lines. It's difficult. You see my pointer? Yep. If you're still clicking there, you will see that you still have more that this is not showing you. I'm going to do it again. I'm just clicking here at the bottom of the tabs. So it's going to show you all of them, because actually there's more than this. The one that I have open is starts in lanes. But you see I have basic and assemblies metric, which is not showing me. So I can click on the basic, for instance, and it's going to bring this basic. Or I can click on the assemblies metric, and it's going to bring these common assemblies, which are usually uh, a good starting point. I 
I don't like this bar. Oh, worst. Okay, guys, uh, were you able to arrive into the common assemblies? Yeah, yes. Okay, so uh, for instance, let's take the primary road full section, just for starters. We're gonna put two or three assemblies here. So click on the primary road full section, and now come here on the drawing with a new target. You see, it gives you this new target, and maybe click in there. gonna hit escape Were you guys able to obtain the representation of the assembly for the primary road, like the one I have? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we don't need this target that we introduced before. We can click on this target and we can delete it. If you notice, this is a two lanes. Is one lane in that in the uh, uh, in one direction and the way back lane. Actually, we don't know what is the width. Of course, you can type dimension like you used to do in the old days. And, and then you can get a dimension for this uh, by saying, give me the dimension from the intersection of this and then to this point. I don't remember anymore, a line. And you can get a you can get a dimension. It's roughly three point six meters, right? This is just basic AutoCAD. But instead of that, click on this lane and make a right click and go to subassembly properties. I'm gonna wait. You have to click on the element and make a right click and then go to subassembly properties as I'm showing on the screen. I wait for you guys. Are you guys there? Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. So you click, click on it, click on super assembly properties. Let's click on this. And go to parameters. Here you have the characteristics. This is the right side of the road. The width is 3.6. The uh, cross slope is 2%. The depth of the pavement is uh, uh, 2.5 centimeters for the first pavement layer and another 2.5 centimeters for the second pavement layer and then it has a base of 10 centimeters and then it has a sub base of 300 uh, millimeters or 30 centimeters you can change any of these characteristics the one that i will uh, likely and often change is the width because most likely you will have two lanes in one direction instead of one. So you can just go click and say 7.2, enter. And then we can click on apply and you will see how the assembly extends. I wait for you guys, go and do it. I'm done. Okay, so you can change other things. If the pavement thickness is not this, or the base thickness is not this, you can go and change it, but I'm not gonna do it. 
For now, I'm just gonna change that, that lane and I'm gonna repeat with the other side. Right click, subassembly properties, parameters, width, 7.2, enter, apply. Okay, so go ahead and do it as well, please. I wait for you guys. Remember, you click on the element, right click, subassembly properties. Um, I have a question. Yes. So those two lanes, it's to be four lanes in total, right? Yeah. Exactly. But I'm assuming, I think my section is two lanes. Because I remember looking at Google Earth and seeing only two lanes in total, not four. Oh, then you can keep it the way it is, if that's the case. Okay. You don't have to change it. So you need to custom uh, this, uh, adjust this to whatever you want for your design. Can I make it into four? Like, do I need to follow the exact route? No, 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 you don't have to, but then you're not gonna obtain the exact amount of cut. And I mean, nobody's gonna get exactly what I'm getting on screen because it depends exactly where you click, where you put the radius, you know, it depends on many things. So it's fine, you can keep it as, as a, as a two-lane uh, undivided highway. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The, the rest of you guys, have you arrived to this point like this? Yes. Yeah. Now, for instance, I would like to have a jersey bean in the middle. Okay. So we can go. And we have a basic barrier here. It is under basic. So I have to go to this tab here. I can click on the barrier. I can come here and I can select the marker. The marker is this marker. Is my target in the very center. I don't know if you can see it. It's the one that is yellow. It's maybe worth actually zooming in. So it is this one, the marker I want to use. So you click on the Jersey barrier, you come here. And the Jersey beam will come. Try and go and do it, please. Are we good guys? Were you able to introduce the Jersey barrier? Yeah. Okay, so now for instance, let's put a sidewalk. However, notice that I have my cut and fill lines. So I'm gonna detach the cut and fill lines. I'm just gonna say move. Remember, Civil 3D will take your regular AutoCAD commands because it's an Autodesk product. So I'm gonna say move. I can move it from any point. I just want to detach this. And now I'm gonna bring a sidewalk here and then I will attach back the cut and fill. So I have my basic sidewalk here. I will come and I will click on the carpet gutter. And if I want a wider sidewalk, I just click on the end of the first sidewalk and I introduce a sidewalk. So you can go ahead and try. Yeah. 
So, Professor, can you repeat what you did after you moved the... Yeah. The... I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little better. I come here to the basic sidewalk, click on it. You have this pointer which says select, select marker with assembly. So you select here. This is your curb and gutter, right? You see? So you click on it. And if you want a wider sidewalk, because you want maybe a cycle lane and a walking lane, then you can you can keep extending if you want, or you can come and just uh, uh, adjust the width of this. Uh, Fares, was it you? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I prefer do I have to put make it uh, the same thing on the other side or just make this one for me? Uh, no, let's do something else on the other side, okay? So I'm gonna hit escape and I need to bring the cut and field lines that I move. Sorry guys, my civil 3D is frozen. So I'm just giving a minute. Yeah, I was about to start praying almost. Zoom, previews. Uh, we need to bring this cut and field lines. So we're gonna take it from here and bring it here at the very end of the sidewalk, okay? So I'm actually gonna zoom a bit to make sure that I do it properly. Uh, okay, so I just brought it there. I can show you. I just brought it there. Is this correct? No. I, yeah, I think you need to activate your snap points. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. But uh, when I move it, I, I think in the last move, I did snap it. But you're right. So I give you a few seconds so you can do that. Please let me know when you are with me. Then I'm done. I'm also with you. So on the other side, on the other side, we're gonna put a, a maybe a ditch. So we're gonna come here to this one that is called, called trench pipes. And we're gonna use this one that is called ditch. Before I use the ditch, I am gonna remove the cut and fill. I'm gonna just uh, detach them. So the same procedure, I click on them. I grab them from the frozen point. I take them away. And now I'm ready to uh, bring here my, uh, my ditch. Um, I'm just gonna zoom a bit. Doesn't make much sense having this carp and gutter. I don't know if you guys agree with me. Um, maybe we can put one lane of sidewalk and then the ditch. Or maybe we can put a shoulder actually. Yeah, let's put a shoulder. So I'm gonna remove this carp and gutter and I'm gonna replace it with a shoulder, is that okay? Because if you notice, I don't have a shoulder for vehicles to park. So I'm, I click on it and I delete. 
I just click delete on my computer. I'm going to wait for you guys to go and delete the car the carpet and got it on the right hand side. Can we have shoulder on both sides? Yeah, you can have shoulder in both sides. I'm just showing you how you bring different elements uh, because I want to put a guardrail, which is another feature that we typically use. True. So that's why I'm introducing here a shoulder and then a, and then a, a guardrail, and then I will put a, a ditch after that. Is everybody here? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to take a shoulder, extend all. That means that you have the pavement, the base, the sub base, you have everything. As you can see, I have all the layers here. You see, I have one layer that is uh, light blue, that's the wear off layer of the pavement. Then I have a yellow or orange, that's the steel pavement. Then I have a blue one, that's the base, and I have a yellow one, that's the sub base. So I'm going to take this one shoulder, extend all. Oh, okay. There. Okay, go on and introduce it yourself, please. How did you get it to be so slanted? Uh, because I click on the top uh, right point of the of this one. So you see in this one you have several points, uh, but you click on the top point, on the top right point. Probably, uh, oh, okay, doesn't let me select it. There. If you click somewhere else, it's like here. Let's say I click here, okay? is gonna attach it to the sub base. So it's not gonna look nice. That's not the case. That's not what you have. So when you are attaching this, oops, just a second, let me delete this one. Just let me delete it. <laughs> Sorry, Lana, just a sec. Doesn't wanna go. Ah, okay, escape. because I, yes, yes, I was still introducing one, that's why. So you can move it if you want, or you can just delete it and introduce again. But when you introduce, you have to introduce it here. On that point. On the top right point of the end of the uh, uh, driving lane. So you're at the bottom of the blue the bottom of the asphalt, right? Uh, Is that what you're I'm, I'm on the top of the asphalt, so I'm here. You have this, and I put it here. I put it here in this corner. When I was approaching with the with the pointer it highlighted those corners that had a circle. You see, I have one, two, three, four corners with a circle. You put it in the top one. Okay. So what's happening on my end is when I approach it, it doesn't select the whole thing. Uh, like for you, you can see how it can extend below the, the, the navy portion and it goes to the subgrade. Continue recording. And uh, here's my civil tribute. Okay, so everybody's here. Did it work? The shoulder for everybody? Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna add two more elements. So I'm just gonna kind of zoom here a bit. And I'm gonna put a guard and rail. It has to be here. Do you see where I have my pointer? 
the, guard, the, the, the guardrail has to come here. I don't want a guardrail down here because then the vehicle is already dropping off from the pavement, right? And I don't want that. It will be right here. So I'm going to go into basic. And I'm going to use the basic guardrail. And I'm going to introduce it here. I'm going to wait for you guys so you can go and do it. Then while you do it, thanks. While you do it, the guardrail is the element that will prevent you from abandoning the road. Why will you ever want to prevent a car from abandoning the road? Because whatever you have on the, uh, on, on next to the road is across a slope that is so steep that the vehicle will roll over. And then there's imminent danger. This happens when you are in rolling terrain, when you are approaching a river. And so it's preferable for the vehicle to hit the guardrail than leaving the road. If the cross slope of the right of way is flat or very minor cross slope and the vehicle can abandon the road and recover, then you don't need a guardrail. Okay. So I'm going to introduce finally here um, a ditch. Do we need to scale down the guardrail? No, it's automatically done. And this is going to be used also for the, your 3D representation if we want to see this in 3D. As it is now, it's way too big. The guardrail no, is six, six feet up, 1.8 meter. Yeah, but no. It's gonna give you your representation added correctly. It's, it's been done so that it gives you the actual representation. So you don't have to change it, don't scale it. Um, I'm gonna pan. And I'm gonna bring a ditch. So we have, we go to trench and pipes, tap. And we bring a ditch. And we're gonna click here at the very end. Do you see where my marker is, my pointer? I'm gonna select that point right there. So you guys can go ahead and do it. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. Everybody, uh, you get the, the ditch? Yes. We still need to bring the cut and fill lines. So I'm going to bring them here at the end of this.
So guys, you can keep adding elements as you need it, right? This is just an example. Uh, where I'm gonna continue with this example and I'm gonna bring now this uh, road, this cross section, I'm gonna apply it to the center line. As you notice, the center line is the target of the assembly. So I have my center line for my road, but that's it. I would actually like to see a feature that represents the road from a top view. So what is gonna happen is I will use that, assign, uh, that, align, that uh, assembly in this center line. Am I going too fast? No. Okay, so I'm gonna dismiss the tool palette. I'm gonna close it here. And I'm gonna go to corridor. So please go ahead and uh, click on corridor yourselves. I'm just gonna rectify here a little bit because uh, this tiny radius, this tiny curves, I don't like them. You don't have to do this. This is because I'm gonna do something else later at the end of today and um, it's gonna look odd if I use those curves. So I'm just gonna fix them quickly. The corridor, if you arrive there, will increase the width of this. So it's like if you are actually introducing the road, but you are at the same time considering the uh, vertical alignment. Okay, so we go on corridor and we need to make sure that we're clear what this is. So this is corridor and we put the name of this road. So let's say this is Main Street. Now, this is uh, very important. You have an alignment so you need to make sure that you are selecting the horizontal alignment. You have a profile. This has to be the vertical alignment. The other one is your surface. We don't want that. You want the vertical alignment. And the assembly is the assembly we just created. So I'm gonna keep the screen there. Oh, pardon, one more. And the target is the existing ground. So, Alignment has to be your horizontal alignment. Profile has to be the vertical alignment. Assembly is the assembly we just created a few seconds ago. And the target surface is the existing ground. Any questions? Are we good? Guys, you have to remember I cannot see you. So I don't know if you are following me or you have questions and I cannot see your faces. So I don't know. <laughs> you have to let me know. Um, if you are here with me, you can go ahead and click OK.
Now I'm going to try to explain myself. This is the baseline for the corridor. That means this is the uh, main element that goes from the initial to the final station. And then I have the assembly representation that will be utilized. If I have multiple assemblies, I can have multiple lines here. Maybe I have one portion that goes from zero to 1,000. Then I have a bridge. Then I can have another section that doesn't have sidewalk. Then I have another section that uh, has uh, double sidewalk on both sides. So if I define multiple assemblies, they will come here below this as a list. For now, we only have one. So we don't really have to worry much about this. Uh, is everybody able to see this? baseline and region parameters for the corridor. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna say, okay. And you're gonna say, rebuild the corridor. Is there a reason why I have an explanation mark next to mine? Uh, an explanation for what, Lana? Uh, I have an explanation mark. You want more explanation? Yeah, no. Um, I have a yellow. Oh, explanation. you have a yellow exclamation. It's because it has a, it has not updated something. Okay. So where where do you have the yellow? So the previous screen that you had open, you know how you had uh, the first line and then there was a subline underneath. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, maybe you show us. Give me a second. I guess. Okay, so we're going to click on the corridor. That will give us the dynamic menu on the top. And we are going to use this option that is called corridor surface. So we're going to click on it. Now that the corridor surface uh, window comes, we're going to click here on the top left icon one time. That will bring my corridor. And now I'm going to specify code or codes. It depends on what I want. The top is the very top of the surface. Like if I were putting my hands on the asphalt, the pave will be the different layers of pavement, base or sub-base. If I'm a subcontractor and I am bringing granular sub-base on the side, and all I want is the calculation of the volume that I need for my sub-base, that's the only one I will choose. If I am the uh, subcontractor or contractor that is doing the excavation, leaving the subgrade soil ready for the pavement, I might be interested in that one. Okay? So, uh, for the purpose of the class, I'm going to introduce the top of the surface and the datum. Okay? How do I do that? Well, I select the first one that I want and I click on the plus. I'm going to wait for you guys so you can go and do that. Done. We go now in datum and we click the plus. Sorry, sir, the datum is uh, the existing ground? Uh, yes, the datum is something like the existing ground, but it's not the existing ground. It's where the road touched the existing ground is the interface between those two. Now, I'm going to change this name Corridor Main Street because this is a corridor surface. So I'm going to say Surface Main Street because I want to remember this is a surface. This is important. Sometimes we forget about this. And, and then it's a bit confusing because it's going to say corridor again. So you will have a corridor for the top, a corridor for that one, and a corridor corridor. So you never know which is which and who is who. So it's important to change this name here. Is it okay, guys? Don't click the okay yet. We still need to go to boundaries. But are you guys with me? Have you introduced that one on top? 
Yes. Okay, so go to boundaries and make a right click. And we're going to select this option. Corridor extends as outer boundary. This is like by default, should come selected when you are designing a road. But Civil 3D is also used to uh, design the foundation of a building or a parking lot and other features uh, which go beyond this class. That's why it's not by default, but for a road, this should be always selected. Okay. I'm gonna wait for you guys. Let me know when you have done it. So we can go ahead and say, okay, and we are gonna rebuild the corridor. What we have gotten is a surface in, in, in the place where we had the corridor before. But this is very helpful because it's gonna uh, allow us to calculate earthworks, cuts and fields. Please let me know when you get here, guys. Then. I'm done. Okay, so now please go to Prospector and expand surface. And you will see you have the new surface main street. And you will see the icon has like a road. That is because this surface is attached to the corridor. They are one entity all together. They're like glued together. That's why you have that icon. It's like saying they're stick, they're glued together. It's important to have this in rebuild automatic. It's already there in rebuild automatic. The same for the existing ground, rebuild automatic. Now we have these two surfaces, that's good news. I can, if I want, uh, change the way I display this corridor. For instance, I can go into the uh, surface properties. So we go with a right click. So make a right click on the surface for the road and select surface properties. Okay. I can change the render material that I want to use. Most likely you would like to have the paving surface asphalt as your render material, right? I will assume that is the most likely case for a road. And I can change the way I represent the surface. Now, here's the difference. Surface style is your 2D top view representation. Whether you want the thin polygon, the thin uh, polygons, the triangles, the contours, you want only the border, okay? So if I say border only, in my 2D, everything will disappear. You saw the difference? Now I have the corridor, but not the surface. If I want the triangles, I can come here to contours and triangles and I can edit on the triangles. I know I'm going fast, you don't have to do this. And I can just change this to triangles. 
and I can change the name of this to triangles. And that will give me a gray triangle surface. Okay, you don't have to follow this guys. That's just for you to have it in the video. Uh, we don't need to do that as a matter of fact. So I'm just gonna go back to where I was. From this point on, I only need one more item to do my calculations of uh, volumes, which we are gonna learn uh, next class. But I wanna show you a little bit of something we're gonna do later. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is gonna be a preliminary. I'm gonna go, sorry, I'm just gonna bring back what I had. Do you see here, uh, I don't know if you can see my pointer. Do you see here you have top 2D wireframe? Can you see that? Yeah, yes. yes. If you click on 2D wireframe, you can change this view to realistic or conceptual. For instance, if I put it in realistic, it depends on how powerful is your computer. Uh, this should give me a representation of the surface. Uh, uh, machine is going slow. Maybe this is not the best machine to do that. It's coming. Okay. So I have now a representation of the surface is still doing it. If I zoom in, I will see that this corridor now looks more like a road with asphalt and it has uh, certain items. Although there are some spatial gaps that I need to go and fill probably. Uh, the conceptual will be similar, but it's not going to be that realistic. It's just going to be a conceptual design. I'm not sure if the machines at Concordia can, uh, uh, are giving you the realistic and conceptual representations. It depends on the graphics cards. Is it working for you guys? Yes. Okay, look what we're gonna do. There are different ways to do this. You can click on the corridor and you can come here to drive. That's one way. The other way is you can come, I think it's an analyze. Yes, analyze and drive. So let's go to analyze and drive. That's probably the one that we, you will always find. Again, this is a preview of what we're gonna do later because we still need to do some work to get a nice driving surface. But I, I'm gonna show you so you understand where we're heading to. And then when we arrive there, it's, it's more natural. Okay, so go ahead and click on drive. Don't do anything after that. I'm gonna read what I have. Select, you can see on the command, command line at the bottom. It says select an alignment, profile, feature line, 3D polyline, survey figure, or corridor feature line as a drive path. Or press enters to select from the list. That is actually my favorite way to do it. Press enter. So please go ahead and press enter.
did you guys got this window? Yeah. There are different ways. I am going to select for today the vertical alignment. And again, do not expect a nice representation. It's gonna be still rough because the surface of the existing ground is crossing over the surface of the road. I need to clip the surface, which I have not done yet. But select the vertical alignment and click OK. Did you get this screen where you have the road in three dimensions? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is the eye height. This is the eye offset. Right now, I am on the center line. I don't want that. I actually want an offset, maybe a couple meters. So now it's a little more realistic when I'm driving on the inner lane. I can choose my speed. So maybe if we're trying to see how does it feel the design for 130 kilometers per hour, you can put it in there. And do you remember we have a target and we have the eye height when we were doing the stop inside distance? Can you recall that? Well, this is my target. You can define it here. But I'm not going to change it for now. We're going to go ahead and click on play. Is everybody with me? Yeah. So we're going to click on play. It's going to start driving you over the road. And at the bottom right, you see the station. Of course, it's going to be the same cross section continuously, as you realize now. Because before, when I was doing the corridor and regions, I told you I could have different type of assemblies, but we are only using one. If you have multiple type of assemblies, then you will transition from one cross section of the road to another cross section of the road. That's a little more difficult and beyond the purpose of this class of uh, CV471. So I'm not gonna uh, entertain that, but it's possible, okay? I'm going to pause the video and I want you to notice that you can click here to go to a specific station that you want to inspect. Lana, so you know your speaker is on, so whatever you say we can hear. Thanks. Forgot about it. Uh, no speaker, your microphone. Uh, so you can go here to whatever station you want or back to the beginning if you wish. You do not see the uh, terrain if you notice. Because if I put the terrain, the terrain is going to go over the road because we have not done the work to clip the terrain. I can show you. Don't do it. You see how the terrain is going over the road? That's because we need to come with scissors. And you see where this green line is? We have to come with scissors and cut the terrain surface using that border, okay? 
So we're going to close. We're going to close on the top right. You have a big X that says close. So hit on that. We're going to close the uh, drive mode. And we're going to clip the surface. Was it cool being able to drive on the road? Very cool. OK, so now we're going to fix that so we can see the terrain adjacent to the road, OK? So uh, when you close, you're going to go back to the uh, top view that we had before. OK. Let me know when you are here, because depending on the speed of the machine, it might take a little longer. Are you guys here? Yes. OK. So now look what we're going to do. We're going to go to the existing ground. And we're going to go to surface properties. OK. So existing ground, right click, surface properties. And we're going to say, no display. I should warn you, this that I'm about to do, you only do when you have arrived to your final design because it's static the way I'm going to clip the surface. So if I do any adjustment, it's not going to update it automatically. To do the one that requires an automatic update is a long process and I don't have the time to explain it in this class. So I'm going to show you the static one. There is, of course, a walk around. You can undo whatever you have done and redo it again if you need to update the surface. So we're going to select no display here and we're going to say apply OK. That is just to ensure that we don't have the existing ground being shown. My computer is uh, regenerating, so give me a second. Okay. Let me know if you did that already. Done. I'm done. Okay, so now we're going to do something very similar. We're going to go to the surface main street, right click, surface properties. Okay. And in the surface properties, I am going to create one surface called triangles. So you can start with any one you want. It doesn't matter which one you start. You have to come here and you have to say copy current selection. It doesn't matter what surface style you have selected. We're going to alter and change the name. Are you guys here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So copy current selection. 
First, we're going to change the name. And we're going to call it triangulation. Okay, we're going to, or you can call it triangles, triangulation, because it's only going to display the base triangles. You remember when we learned to create uh, contours in uh, surveying? And you guys had the grid, and with the grid, you trace uh, a, a grid that sometimes was in the form of triangles or, or squares. That's what we're going to display now. Can I move on? No. Yeah. Go to display. It's almost the last tab. You have information borders, contours, grid points, triangles, watersheds, analysis, display. And summary, we're going to display. In display, you have one that is called triangles. We're going to turn on that layer. We're going to keep the border and we're going to turn off major and minor contours and anything else. We're only going to leave triangles and border on. Are we okay, guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay, hold, click apply and okay. And then again, apply, okay. You should get something that looks roughly what I have now. I can change the conceptual to 2D wireframe. So I changed the conceptual to 2D wireframe up here. And these are my triangles. Did you guys get something like this? Yeah. Okay, now yeah. look what we have. Oh, yes, yeah, somebody did not? No, I said yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, look what we have. We have two solid boundary green lines and then a bunch of gray triangles. I will take those green lines and create a, 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 a cutting border, okay? So how I do that? I come here and I click on one of the gray triangles. I just click on my grid. Let me know when I can move. Then you can. Okay, now see. You have extract objects. This is the magic. This is the one that is gonna do the magic for us. We're gonna click on extract objects. And we're gonna extract the border only. So you only leave the box for border. So go and do it, please. You can click okay when you are done. I'm done. I'm done as well. Then. What this did is it gave me a 3D polyline with the border. 3D polyline with the border. And that is going to be my cutting scissors for the existing ground. 
So existing ground, you better go and hide because I'm about to cut you. Now, to cut the existing ground is an easy process, so don't be scared. Yes, I'm gonna try to show you here for a moment and then we do it, okay? You expand the existing ground, you expand the definition, and you come to boundaries. So go and do that. Then. The rest of you, are you guys okay? Yes. 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 Make a right click and say add. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna define a boundary for the existing ground. You are going to get this window. We're going to give it a name that we remember what it is. Sometimes you need to create multiple boundaries to the existing ground. I am creating an inner boundary to the existing ground, but sometimes you need to create an outer boundary to the existing ground. So, and you need to remember for what feature you are creating a boundary. In this case, it is for the road corridor that I'm creating a boundary. So that's why I call it from road corridor. Ready, guys? Yes. The type is hide. That means we're going to hide the existing ground on the interior of this uh, boundary. It's not going to be shown. So we say hide as type. It's going to be hidden. We leave the rest as it is. Non-destructive break line is going to stay there with the checkbox. And we're going to say OK. Don't click anything after that. You will see it's asking to select the object or surface. So don't click anything yet. Let me know when you are here, guys. Yeah. We are gonna select the 3D polyline. You see, it says select object or surface one found because I set the polyline that I did. And then you can do a right click of the mouse mouse right click so first you click on the 3d polyline which is the green one on the boundary and then right click on the mouse and then you can go enter i will repeat in case somebody's doing it you click on the 3d polyline because it's asking you to select and then you can click enter or you can click a, you can make a right click mouse and enter
For those of you who had finished, you will notice that we have here at the bottom on the prospector, the associated boundary. And you have a solid uh, black dot next to boundary. That tells you that this has been defined. And here is the definition of it. Now, to know that we actually have cut the existing ground, we're going to bring it back because the existing ground was uh, it was hidden. Sorry, guys, I, my corridor was not updated. So I just I'm just updating. Don't do this. Ignore what I'm doing now. So we're going to go and show the existing ground. If you remember, we have hide the existing ground. So we're going to go show the existing ground, and then we're going to go and get rid of this uh, awful uh, grid that we have here. So we go to existing ground, right click. And surface properties. Okay, I'm gonna assume you are there. And instead of no display, we're gonna say one and five design for contours. And for the material, I'm gonna choose grass, short. Okay, so one and five design and grass. If you have selected that, you can click apply and okay. Okay, guys? Yes. Apply. Okay. Uh, I have not been mentioning this, but you just dismissed. This is a summary of the warnings and things that the software comes across. And I've been dismissing this. Uh, I want to get rid of this uh, not very nice looking triangle representation. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to go to Surface Main Street and Surface Properties. I'm going to assume you are there. Surface Main Street, Surface Properties, or whatever name you gave to your surface. And we're going to do a, a, a similar adjustment. Uh, for this surface, I'm going to say uh, maybe border only and surface asphalt. Remember, the surface style is for my 2D representation. I already have my corridor representation. So there's no point on seeing a corridor representation and a surface representation of the same one on top of the other one. That's why I'm setting it up as border only. Now for the 3D representation, I do care about the render material if I want to go with the realistic view. The realistic view is gonna use this surface asphalt as representation. So you can go ahead and say apply and okay. I want you guys to look at my screen. You see where I have my pointer. 
this is one of my contours you see when the contour touch the boundary line the contour disappears that was not the case before that contour will have continued through the road and that's why the 3d representation was all messed up you can inspect uh, your drawing and you will see that uh, by much is correctly done it has cut your surface in the right locations uh, not always because i did a rebuild after and as i explained this was a, a, um, a static approach shall we go back to the drive guys yes okay so go to drive and remember you have to click on drive and enter click on drive click on enter this time i'm gonna choose a corridor feature line So on the drop down here, alignment, corridor, survey, feature, you go to corridor feature line. You can notice that you can actually drive on top of the sidewalk if you were a pedestrian. You see here, sidewalk. Uh, you can do it on top of the guardrail, but I don't see who might be doing that. You can do it on the crown of the road, that's uh, the center line, and on top of the pavement. I have multiple lanes, if you remember, so we can choose either uh, crown pave 1 or crown pave 2. Let's say crown pave 1. Uh, no, actually, let me see. Yeah, no, page one. Page one is right. This should be fine. And let's click OK. Do you see how my next uh, nearby ground is now visible and is not invading the road? And it actually looks nice because you have the terrain next to you and the road you have designed. That is the cutting we did with the boundary. That is the boundary we added to the existing ground. Okay, guys, I'm out of time. You can click on play if you want to drive. I'm gonna click on play, I have a few seconds. Okay, this is regenerating. Just for the last few seconds, uh, you see that you can actually drive and the terrain is, is behaving nicely. You got a good idea where are your cuts. You see how in this location I'm now, the, um, uh, the cut is increasing and the terrain is above. Are you guys able to see something like that in your screen? Yeah. All right. So I'm out of time now. Uh, this is it for the lab. It's 4.30. In a few seconds, it's going to be 4.30. So there's no point for me to show you anything else. Um, we will continue uh, next Friday. So I'm going to stop the... Uh, recording and I will be posting this on uh, YouTube.